Hello and welcome to Hypono, where we bring you the latest news briefings and analysis on technologies and EVs to keep you informed. This hour in focus, we are exploring why Huawei's SoC is made by SMIC and Plus27 and Node. But before we proceed, please kindly like and subscribe to this channel by clicking the bell notification feature below to help YouTube learn of your preferences and to receive notifications each time new videos are uploaded on this channel. Let's get started. In its most recent study, Tech Insights mentioned that its laboratory in Ottawa, Canada was able to verify that the system on chip, so see, inside of Huawei's Mate 60 Pro smartphone was produced using the N plus 27 in manufacturing node developed by SMIC. The Minerva Bitcoin miner chip was manufactured using the N plus 1 pseudo 7 in process node, and this is an improved version of that process node. Tech Insights was the first company to identify the advanced processing effort that SMIC was putting forth, and they did so by confirming the presence of the SMIC N plus 1 node in the Minerva chip in July of 2022. According to Pacific Technology, a Chinese media outlet, at least 46 Chinese manufacturers were responsible for producing at least 90% of the components and parts that went into the Mate 60 Pro. Tech Insights further observed that if SMIC's N plus 2, 7 m node with integrated SRAM cage and 5G RF front end chipsets were to be released, it would undoubtedly mark a huge milestone and breakthrough for China's semiconductor sector. This would be a move that would be disruptive on the world arena. When compared to the earlier report on the Minerva chip by Tech Insights, it is clear that SMIC has found a solution to the problem of mass production yield and has attained a suitable level of yield in order to sell smartphone chips to Huawei. This is also the first time that China's advanced semiconductor manufacturing node has used Bitsol, which is another name for embedded SRAM. However, it is still unclear how many of the supply chain operators that have collaborated with Huawei can instantly attain the competitiveness of scale procurement. This is an issue that has to be answered. Profitability and the cost of using chips manufactured by Chinese companies may not be a consideration for Huawei or other Chinese firms that are prohibited from purchasing advanced chips anyway, despite the fact that many industry insiders have questioned the commercial feasibility of manufacturing 7 and chips with immersion DUV. This is due to the fact that many industry insiders have questioned the commercial feasibility of manufacturing 7 and chips with immersion DUV. According to a senior semiconductor industry analyst, China is progressively creating a local ecosystem for the design and manufacturing of SOX, and Huawei purportedly has control over five fabs, logic and memory, in China via equity investments. This information was provided by Huawei. In the recent past, the rise in the price of lithium has gone into overdrive as electric vehicle, EV manufacturers such as Tesla Incorporated, NASDAQ TSLA, have been scrambling to acquire supplies in the face of rapid EV growth and constrained supply. In the course of just two years, the lithium bonanza caused prices for lithium carbonate to increase by more than six times, and prices for spodumene increased by nearly 10 times. A combination of factors, including a decline in demand for electric vehicles, EVs, and a flood of new supply, primarily from China, Australia, and Chile, led to the eventual bursting of the lithium bubble in late 2022, which sent prices tumbling. This was unfortunate for the bulls. The price of lithium carbonate in China has fallen significantly since its all-time high of approximately CNY 600,000 per ton, which was reached in November 2022. The current price of lithium carbonate in China is CNY 200 and 5,000 per ton. And it would appear that the bulls in the lithium market aren't going to get a respite anytime soon. It has just come to light that the United States may have accidentally stumbled across lithium deposits that are larger than those found in Bolivia's salt flats, which are the location of the largest lithium reserves in the world. A new study that was published in the journal Science Advances has now estimated that the McDermott Caldera, a volcanic crater on the Nevada-Oregon border, harbors 20 to 40 million metric tons of lithium deposits. This is nearly double Bolivia's 23 million metric tons at the upper range. 
While the discovery itself is not news, the study does estimate that the McDermott caldera is home to lithium deposits. This is a very, very substantial deposit of lithium if you are to believe their back of the envelope assessment. According to Anuk Borst, a geologist at Q Leuven University who was not involved in the study but who spoke with Chemistry World, it could change the dynamics of lithium globally in terms of price, security of supply, and geopolitics. It is estimated that a large magma eruption took place roughly 16.4 million years ago, resulting in the formation of the caldera. Over a depth of more than 200 meters, the lithium is stored in a special kind of elite that is rich in lithium. The reserves are primarily concentrated in one location, which makes the bargain even better because it reduces the amount of land that would be destroyed by mining. They seem to have hit the sweet spot where the clays are preserved close to the surface, so they won't have to extract as much rock, yet it hasn't been weathered away yet, Borst has told Chemistry World. They seem to have hit the sweet spot where the clays are preserved close to the surface. In spite of the fact that the lithium in the McDermott caldera is bound up in clay, which means that mining costs are anticipated to be lower in comparison to mining spodumene deposits, lithium extraction from clay has never been done on a commercial scale. This presents a slight problem for the rapidly expanding lithium sector in the United States. Bolivia's efforts to generate lithium for commercial purposes using a company that is wholly owned by the state have been fruitless for many years. Because clay is where the majority of lithium in Mexico is located, industry experts continue to have doubts about the true worth of Mexico's recently nationalized large lithium reserves. This is one of the reasons why. Then there are the significant problems that have been affecting the environment recently. In addition to consuming a significant quantity of fuel and releasing significant quantities of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, the mining of lithium can also pollute groundwater with hazardous heavy metals. Because they see the site as sacred, Native American tribes are not participating in the celebrations around the recent discovery. Even NASA has expressed their opposition to mining in the region. Those who are enthusiastic about lithium, on the other hand, might take some solace in the fact that an appeal to stop mining in Thacker Pass was rejected by a federal court in July. However, despite these technical obstacles, a number of American corporations have placed bets on the newly discovered lithium resource. To give an example, lithium junior mining firm Lithium Americas Corp. NYC LAC has announced that it intends to start producing lithium at its Thacker Pass project in Nevada in the year 2026. The company claims that recent in-situ study has uncovered a rare claystone in the volcano crater that contains between 1.3% and 2.4% of lithium. This is almost double the amount of lithium that is found in magnesium smectite, which is a more typically found mineral. If they can extract the lithium in a way that requires a very minimal amount of energy to do it, or in a procedure that does not consume a great deal of acid, then this may have a very large impact on the economy. According to statements made by Belgian geologist Anuk Borst to Chemistry World, the United States would have its own source of lithium, and industry would have less reason to worry about supply shortages. The discussion comes to an end here for the foreseeable future. We appreciate you watching. We'll catch up with you in the following video.